What's up? So a month ago, we did a really cool experiment in one hour on Zoom. Can we plan one month's worth of content in one hour? We got like a hundred people in. People were like, dude, I have like ideas pouring out of my brain right now. So I'm like, why not share it to YouTube? You can find the worksheets below in case you want to like walk through it and actually do the exercises. So hopefully this helps. Consider one month in one hour masterclass. Okay. Now let's begin. I'm good at what I do, but people don't know it. Is that you? Yeah. Same. Sometimes I feel stuck and I lack direction. Is that you? Same. I know I should create, but it doesn't come naturally to me. Is that you? Writing content takes me way too long. Cool. Because that's what we're here for. Today, I'm going to show you how to write content. It's going to be so fast. And at the end, again, my promise to you is you're not going to have a to-do list. You're going to have a done list. If you stay until the end of the, on the masterclass, I'm going to send you both the worksheet and the recording. So that's going to be at the end. Okay. So let's go. I feel like sometimes when we create content, we start with step two instead of starting with step one. And we forget to make the main thing, the main thing. Why are we on Twitter? What is the reason that we log in every day? And instead of watching Netflix, we decide to go on the Twitter app and stress about our aggregation being low. Like, why is it that we do this? And uh, kind of the answer came to me while I was in Austin, Texas a week ago. I actually went to watch the My First Million podcast live. Right. So it's, it's these guys in the middle. So if you don't know this, this was set up venue that was sold out with 600 people flew to Austin, Texas to listen to three dudes talk about business. To me, this was like really cool. I met a lot of people, including the guys at the right and the bottom, the guy next to me, his name is Rohit. It's also inside tweets and clients. I met him in Austin, but he, I got, I invited him to the thing. And, and he didn't know who was speaking. He didn't know the My First Million guys. And I asked him, what do you think about the guys? And he said, ah, you know what? What did you think about Andrew, actually, the uh, guy in white? I'm like, what do you think about Andrew? And he's like, ah, it was cool. It was fine. And then I told him, yo, by the way, Andrew is a billionaire. And you should have seen his eyes. He's like, what? He said, what? Like, we listened to a billionaire speak, which I thought was pretty cool. And 600 people thought it was pretty cool because they flew to Austin. And I think that is the main thing. That is what you want. It's brand. It is the guys' brand, My First Million, Shen Puri and Sam Parr and Andrew Wilkinson that made people fly all the way there. It is the brand that allows you to tweet, hey guys, I'm in this city. And then other people go, yo bro, I'm in that city, let's have lunch. It's your brand that allows you to, hey, I'm going to launch a product. And then you get inundated with lead flow. That is why you should tweet. It's not engagement. It's not even cash. It's brand. This is the main thing. And I feel like there's strong brands and then there's weak brands. If I tweeted, hey, I'm recording a live podcast, nobody would give a shit, but this guy's did. So why? Like, why could they pull that off? And I feel like there's two ways to build a brand. There's a weak way and a strong way. So weak brands, what they do is first they learn something and then they tell you about that something. This is how they create content. So they learn about books and then they are the guys that tell you, hey, these are the 10 books that feel legal to know about. They are the guys that research chat GPT prompts and tell you, hey, these are some good prompts you could use, but like they never did anything. So at the heart of their content, it's the message. So in the end, they end up amplifying a message. They end up getting someone leads, they end up getting someone sales, but that someone may not be them. This is how you end up with a brand that has a big following, but nobody takes you serious. And trust me, I got there and I made that and it was horrible. This is how you end up with a bunch of likes and no cash. Whereas this brands in the right, they do something different. They do things first and then they show people what they've done. So for example, with the billionaire, right? He became a billionaire first and then he showed people that he was a billionaire and that's why 600 fucking people flew to Austin to watch him. Before that event, one day after, there was a Japanese pop concert and three dudes talking about business beat the Japanese pop concert attendance. It was crazy. That's what you want. That's the brand you want. And I feel like if you're busy right now, because you are in a masterclass about how to create a month's worth of content in one hour, you're probably busy doing things. If you're busy, that's great news because that means that the hard part is already done. You've already done things. All that's left is showing what you did. Does that make sense? So for example, as a billionaire, if I were to make a wild guess, I would say that becoming a billionaire is harder than making people respect you once you already are a billionaire, right? Because becoming a millionaire is hard. Talking about your achievements and getting clout from it, that's easy. From your offline work, you get online clout. This is how I see it. You do the hard part first and then content comes easy. So if you're busy, that means you're already doing the hard part, which means that 
bro, you're already there. For example, right here on the left, getting that lead flow, that shit was hard. Like filling calendars, that shit's hard. Writing a thread about how I filled my calendar was easy. Took me 15 minutes. Building a seven-figure Twitter account, you can see the notifications over there of my payments. If you're interested in it, I was debating over where to include this, but I did it. Building a seven-figure Twitter account was hard. Writing a thread about how I built a seven-figure Twitter account was fairly easy. And I feel like if you're already doing things, then you don't need to overthink content. You just need to show people what you've done. And this is how you build a way stronger brand. I learned this concept from Jack Butcher. Your work, it's you working on a sawmill. It's you cutting things. It's you doing things. Content is what's left from all the work you've created. It's sawdust. Now, a lot of people watching this, maybe this is you. You've already created so much work. You've done things. You have screenshots you could take. You have dashboards you could screenshot. You have emails you could collect. You have recordings from Zoom calls you could share. You have all this sawdust sitting around and you're not sharing it, but you could. And if you just did, I feel like that is the missing piece you need to create a month's worth of content in one hour. It's not creating new content. It's taking the sawdust you've already done and using that as content. I feel like if you've are too busy to create content or you feel like you don't have enough time to create content is because you're looking at it the wrong way. Right now, you're performing work, right? This is you doing work. This is you being busy and being productive. Now, this is you. And then you're like, right, after I perform my work, I also have a second task to do. I also have to go back and I need to create content. So you look at it as two things. I wouldn't look at it as two things if I were you. And this is a mindset shift I gave a client that really helped them create more content faster. It's your performing work right now. This is you doing work, okay? Now, from that, this is everything you do. Actually, sorry, the blue circle is everything you do. And this is, the red triangle is the content, the what you deliver to your client, right? So it can be Zoom calls, it can be your PDFs, it could be all of the things that come with you delivering your service. Now, that is a red thing. But what most people fail to realize, I feel, is that from your work, a lot of residue and a lot of content is created. So maybe you were in a Zoom call, right? I don't know if this has happened to you. You're in a Zoom call and you say something that you're like, oh man, that was good. That was fire. Have you ever done that? And maybe that happened while you were delivering a service for your client. It's recorded. You're just not sharing it right? Or have you ever said something on a conversation, right? Or maybe you're delivering a service for a client or you're messaging your client and you say something that's like, oh, I got to tweet this. And you can share that, just not doing it. Or maybe sometimes you created, there, there's questions that your clients keep asking you and you've created a, a PDF, right? And that PDF addresses their questions and you gave it to your clients. You're just not sharing it. And you could, you're just not. You created all this sawdust and you still think that you don't have enough content because you're not looking at it the right way. You don't need to look at work and content as one to two. Look at it as just one. It's not two steps. It's one different step. So let me give you an example right here. The other day, a client, Lucas, asked me this question. Hey man, I don't have time to create content. From that question, I'm like, oh, thanks for asking, right? From my work and me delivering the thing, I wrote up a thread from it. And then you can see Quinn Fulmer, I made a masterclass for him, for the 10 clients members. That's me doing the work. But then I said to my Yulia, my assistant, hey, Yulia, can you send this to Quinn, who's my editor, so we can turn it into a YouTube video? From my work, I created content, my sawdust, right? And then Lucas sent me a message. He said, hey, man, you really killed it with that. Thank you for so many ideas. I'm like, great. This is social proof. I used that. And then I took that thread. I wrote up an email. You guys are probably getting it in a few days. Open if you feel like you have no time to create content. That's an email. Right. And then I told the story in a tweet that I'm using to promote my email list. Sawdust and saw mills. This is how it works. Don't look at your work and your content as two separate things. Look at it as one. And I promise that if you look at it as one, you're going to be able to create more content than you ever thought possible. Great content isn't created. Great content is collected because you've already created it. You just don't know it because you feel like you need to do something else. Whereas in reality, it's not that you have to do something else. It says you have to only show what you've already done. It is that simple. My most popular YouTube video ever was of me writing tweets for a client. I didn't create that. Like I didn't have to do two things. I just needed to press record on my screen and that was it. So I really guess you're trying to get what I, I'm getting what I'm trying to say here. But now it's your turn. This is when we transition to the second part of this class is 
we're going to get fucking busy and we're going to start writing. So everybody, can you pull out your pen and paper or your Google Docs? We're going to work and we're going to create one month's worth of content here. I'm going to show you, I think it's like 12 or 13 examples. And as I go, be very loose. I'm going to give you a few ideas. And if you're stuck in one, don't think about it too much. You just write as many ideas as you have. Okay. Just have as many ideas as you have. And eventually you're going to come up with a bunch of content for the next month. The key here is don't get stuck. Okay. If you're ready to create content, let's go. Let me pull it up. Somebody said, somebody roasted me on this call. I'm going to show you how to use your sawdust and I'm going to give you a few examples. So let's start with number one, reuse. Think about this and write it on whatever you have. What work that you've already created is already done. So for example, Jake Trinder, who's the YouTube expert I told you about, he made a master class for the tweets and clients members. And then he left it there. He just like, okay, work done. But then I told him, bro, but if you take that recording and you just share it to your Twitter, it's like great proof. And you say, hey, I made an interview in a private mastermind. Or this interview with Marcos. Marcos did an interview with me. I make 30 camp on Twitter. Me and JK recorded a masterclass. Want to watch it? Reply and I'll DM you the link. This is a recording that was already done. Maybe you have already done a podcast. Maybe you have already done a masterclass. So think about it. you right now. What work is already done? that you've done. I'm going to give you one minute to think about it. And then we're going to keep going on each one. What are some conversations you can screenshot? Okay. So for example, I had this conversation right here of a guy saying, Hey man, a guy booked a call with me, didn't engage with my DMs before. And this is just like proof that my shit works, right? So for you, it's which chats have you had with your clients or anybody you've helped that you can just rewind and be like, yo, I have that. I remember I have that. Recall the conversations, write them down. Or maybe some results you can recall, like this one. I had this tweet that made me 50K the other year, like a year ago or something. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's a result that did. And I didn't talk about it. It happened in 2022, though it was over a year ago, but I didn't write about it. I need to just rewind and bring that back to life because people forget about what they had for breakfast. I can assure you they forgot about what are some screenshots you posted a year ago. Next, we're going to keep going as we have a month's worth of content plan. Oh, sorry. Reasoning. What do you see? And this is, a, this is an example like a John. So John is a member of Tweets and Glides and he didn't know what to post. And I'm like, bro, he's a health expert. What he could do is he could go over people's like blood tests, right? And then he goes, oh, this tells me you have a magnesium deficiency. This tells me you have anxiety. This tells me you have this. And maybe you're a fitness expert. I, I screenshotted my client's results. This told me that he had his cortisol level high. So what are some things, for example, for me, it's tweets. Like when I see a tweet, I'm like, I can tell a lot about the person, but sometimes people don't see as much as I see. For you, what do you see? What object can you see that you can analyze that you've already done? Maybe it was an email and you could see something different in the copy. Maybe it was a result and you could analyze some things about that result. We have another guy, Tom. He helps people with their knees, right? They have fucked up knees. So what he can do is if you send him a video of like you squatting, he can tell you, oh, this is where your knee is fucked up because he sees it in other people. Too. So real quick, what are some things that you see that others don't that you can just recall and record yourself on a screen saying, hey, this tells me this, this tells me that I see this. What are some things you can see that others cannot? And by the way, this comes natural to you because if you can see it and others can't, then well, it's easy for you. It comes natural to you. Tweets come naturally to me. The blood testing comes naturally to John. What comes natural to you? All right. Next, recorded. What can you record? So this is a good one. So my most popular YouTube video, again, was me go writing tweets live, 6.5K views. And it was just me doing my thing. So think about it. what work are you already doing that you can record yourself doing? Writing copy is one. Creating fitness plans for your clients. That's another one. Writing cold emails, editing headlines, you moving stuff around. What can you record? Think about what do you do that you can record and write it down. Tweemix is really good for this. Tweemix is an extension by Tweet Hunter. You know, it's known as the best company ever. So you can go on back and watch your best tweets. When you posted this, yeah, a lot of your audience saw it, but also the audience you got since you posted it hasn't seen it. So why not do it again? For example, I did an interview with Mike and Nikita right here, which were clients that got some pretty good results inside tweets and clients, but that was like a year ago. And I thought, man, the P I posted it then. I should just reuse it because I posted it a year ago. I've got plenty of followers since last year. Why not just use it again? So what content performed well that your audience or even you probably forget about? 
think about it. What have you, what can you just post again? Actually, this should be called reposts. What can you repost? David White says lots of ideas pouring out. That's the point, bro. That's the point. Now, retell. Like every follow is an implicit request for information. People who follow you want to be a little bit more like you, however slightly. So what you can do is you can tell your story again, right? It could go with Asaro's revenue in April 2023. Ben, so he quit his nine to five. Now he makes money with his business. He could say, in this year, I quit my nine to five. The next year, I made this much. Next year, I made that much. And this year, I made this much. You could share your journey. You don't need to think about that again because it is your journey. What stories can you tell? Can you tell maybe how much money you've made over the years? Can you tell your follower counts? Can you tell how your perspective has shifted? I wrote a thread on how I thought it's six versus seven figures. What can you take people through the journey of money, time, transformation, follower count, metrics? What can you screenshot? A lot of people do this with fitness. They show their body, right? With money, hey, this is how much money I made, right? This is how much money I made before. I do that all the time. If you see me in every podcast, I'll try to tell the story of how I grew up. And I wasn't poor, but like I grew up in a poor country. And I tell that story and people are like, oh my God, it's so relatable. I'm like, thanks, bro. It's, it's called marketing. <laughs> but yeah, you can retell that story. Three. Now, this is great if you guys work with, with dashboards and you can, you're can you able to screenshot things. So Josh Back is another client and he, he works with Shopify stores, right? So what's cool about dashboards is that ev you can split it by times, right? So every every time frame tells a different story. Okay, so he could share the sales of one year. He could do that. He also could split the time frames per month and write a thread of what he did every month that got him that result. And then he could do that per week. And then he can like further segment to. Hey, this day we had a spike in sales. What happened that day? Maybe he sent out an email. Then he could say, this email made this much money. Like I can retweet if you want it. It's the million dollar email, right? So that's the coolest thing about working with dashboards. So can you remember a few times in your business that you had some really good months or maybe some even bad months, whatever, that you could freeze and go over the dashboard, set that time frame, tell that story, right? You can build an account just of this tip. So hopefully you're getting it here that, again, great content isn't created. Great content is collected, okay? Next, re-answer. Lucas's question. Yeah, a client asked me, I'm busy delivering for my clients. I don't have to create content. So from Lucas's question, this masterclass was born. And we have a lot of people here. And I join, a lot of people join my email list because of this. So it works. I feel like that for every one person that asks a question, there's a hundred people that have the same question that don't ask. So right now, write down maybe three, not in the chat, but in your notebook or whatever you have it, write down three of common questions that you get. What are some questions that people are asking you? They are already telling you, hey, bro, we want this. Like, I want to learn this from. So I'm going to give you one minute for that. So essentially, content is everywhere. Interview. Now, one of the best ways to promote your service is interviewing people who you work with. So go to my channel and please ignore the Dragon Ball Z videos. That's not mine. Thank you. If you check this out, I interview my clients and then I ask them, hey, bro, like, how do you make money? Like, how was it? And please, can you sell my service too? Like, it, it's very effective. So which of your clients right now would be down for an interview if you did it? Why are you not recording an interview with your clients right now? That's what you should be doing. And what I do here is I call it the 555 interview, by the way. So it's for five minutes, I'm the hero. For 55 minutes, they are the hero. So for five minutes, I would ask them to give me a video testimonial. I'll save that. And then for 55 minutes, we'll tell their experience. They will be the hero and they will be giving out game. So that way from one hour, I get a testimonial and I also get an interview that I can share that makes them look good and it doesn't make me look like a dick. Repurpose. I, re I recorded an interview with Mike right here. You can see it on YouTube. And I thought, if I did this on YouTube, why don't I just turn it into a case study in Google Docs? It's the same thing, and a VA could do that for you. So which piece of content have you only done in one format that you could do in other formats? Write it down, 20 seconds. All right, now re-celebrate. We feel like every time we get a client win, we have to celebrate it at that time. Not true. Check this out. If you see my pin thread, I, every day I will share wins from a clients. From clients. Now, these are not, they're not all new. Some of them happened a few months ago. Some of them happened almost a year ago. Who cares? Your wins don't have to be recent. Think about it. So what wins from your clients can you re-celebrate? And this is where I think about this. I call it, let me find this, your 
wins channel is your best marketing asset. You can re-celebrate and keep your clients' as wins over and over again. So if you're a ghostwriter, example, if you're a ghostwriter, maybe you had a thread that went viral. You could say, hey, look, this is how many likes this thing got. Likes and cash, but you can do it. Great. And then you can re-celebrate that one. And instead of screenshotting the likes portion, you can screenshot the new followers option. You re-celebrate. The content isn't supposed to be new. Great content isn't created, it's collected. Let's keep going. Live, what can you do live? Uli is a client as well, and he's excellent at editing emails that raise money from investors. So what he could do is he could edit an email live. Brandon is really good at crafting fitness plans for his clients when they're too busy. So if you're struggling, maybe you're a fitness guy and you're struggling to find clients that make actually are not broke, what you can do is you could say, these are my clients' demand. Not much, not much time in the gym. He has to work a lot and he has limited hours, right? And he's, oh, let's craft a plan together. He can record his screen and craft a plan as he goes. See, what can you do like? Great. Segment. This is a great tweet by Brian, I thought. So he sent out this ultimate Twitter masterclass. And to me, he could really juice this up. I don't know if you guys have watched The Avengers. The Avengers launched as the last movie. First, they launched Captain America and then Iron Man. And then it's Hulk and then it's like Thor, right? So he could do that. He could say, hey, I have the ultimate tour growth as Captain America. The 1DM template, that's the one. This one, this one. And then he launches each one, juices each one. And then because people just forget, what he can do is he can say, hey guys, I have the ultimate ghost riding thing, right? It's called the Avengers strategy. What can you segment? And then you can launch it all at once. Maybe you've done a course in the past. Can you reuse that? Think about it. Recall. I don't know if you guys have watched The Last Dance. It's the Michael Jordan documentary. And they didn't refilm anything because, you know, Mike can't play like he used to play. But they could just recall that story and tell it again. I saw Tweet Hunter and I thought, you know what? What if I just told that story again? Do I regret selling Tweet Hunter? No. Boom. There you go. 400 likes. You can just retell that story. People have already heard this, but a lot of people haven't. It is arrogant to believe that every time we post, all of our audience sees our posts. Not true. A very small percentage of people do, which is why I believe you shouldn't be afraid of reposting your things because there's thousands of people in your audience that have not seen it yet. And you could. And if there's not thousands of people in your audience, then I don't know what you're listening to me. Because if you want to grow your audience, I'm not your guy. But if you want to monetize your audience, welcome. So yeah, you can retell that story. And I thought this was pretty cool, by the way. I tweeted this in my insights from the Tweet Hunter sale. And when I went to say hi to Sam at the, my first million podcast, he said, hey, bro, I read your thread. I really liked it. I'm like, fuck yeah, man. Thanks. Like, it was really cool. People want to hear these stories. You're just not giving into them. So what can you read recall? All right. I'm going to give you like 10 seconds and then we're going to keep going. And the last one is reject. So Joe was a client. He is a client. And he said he helps others set up their Amazon FBA business. But he couldn't take one because he lived in a weird country that didn't, wouldn't allow him to do Amazon, something like that. And then he said, should I like be up front about it or should I just not take him as a client? And I told him, no, nah, don't take it. If you're not going to do a good service, might as well not do it at all. He's okay, thank you. But then I told him, yo, you know what you should do? You should fucking tweet that. Say, hey, a client really wanted to work with me, but unfortunately, he lives in this and this area. And I can't really help. And if I'm not going to do an excellent job for my clients, then I, I don't want to do anything. Why would you reject something? Why have you rejected something in the past? This, like, this is what I call a BDM. This is a big, big move. Because then people go, oh, oh, that's cool. One time we kicked someone from tweets and clients because they were like lying. That's a big, big move. I don't want your money if you're going to lie. That you can use that as rejection. It elevates your status, makes you look great. So reject. Do you have more content than you had an hour ago? Say me. I do. I have more content than I had an hour. This was this fucking work. I'm glad because that's what we're here for. So that, that's what I wanted to, to understand that great content as you created, it's collected. So you actually don't have more content than you had an hour ago. You just realized you have more content than you had an hour ago.